and here we go. We have lift off. Propulsion continues to be normal. Our ACCA chamber pressure looks good. Following up. Unfolds to go. Indeed. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. Yeah! This is nothing to be igniting in the flare, correct? Yikes, you bet, Concur, we do need more of these because today we're looking for some more engine testing on Ship 29. There has been an overpressure notice delivered, the recondenser is active, the tank farm is active, and the ship is sitting proudly, as you can see on Stand B here in Starbase. I see the 5x5s in chat, so I know I'm coming through loud and clear. Thank you all for doing that. I'm Jack Byer, your host for this engine testing stream, and... We're getting right into it. So we are also joined today by Mr. Trevor Sesnick. Trevor, am I saying your last name right? I, I realize I've never asked you that. Yes, it's a pretty easy last name to pronounce correctly. <laughs> At least the Americanized version of it. Excellent. And also joining us for commentary is Mr. Ryan Caton. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing all right, Jack. I'm, I, I haven't spoken on a on a starbase stream in a little while so you know I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this ryan like as the person with the british voice among us three you get to say things and to the american audience it just sounds like smarter and classier so yeah. at certain points i might have to just smarter and classier <laughs> all right well uh at, at a certain point just like say things like everything is nominal or, or something like that like just say things like that and, and everyone will be reassured and they'll feel like we have really intelligent and classy commentary okay okay i'll make sure to see that for you jack thanks ryan as always we're doing our standard thing here so if you all have any questions we will answer them potentially so type at nasa space flight into chat and we will see your questions pop up in some software we have running in the background. With all of that said, what are we expecting today? Trevor, what are you expecting today? We already saw a six-engine static fire with Ship 29 on Monday. So, what do? Maybe that didn't go well, or maybe this will be another single engine? What do you think? Yeah, so... Obviously, unfortunately, we don't have any official confirmation from SpaceX about what tests they're planning on conducting today. But to me, um, Monday's test looked pretty good. It looked very clean um, and, you know, no, uh, there were none of the usual signs of an abortive test. It looked like full duration and whatnot. So I would be very surprised if this was another six engine test. Um, my personal prediction, therefore, is this is probably a single engine Raptor firing. Um, perhaps out of the header tanks like we've seen before, um, but that that would be my guess. Good deal. Well, we'll just have to wait and see, but the recondenser is active, and that means we are getting into some propellant load action, which means a potential static fire is not long off. Hooray! Ryan, what are, you, what are you expecting today? Uh, I'm expecting to have some fish cakes for tea. Uh, in terms of Starship, I'm going to concur with everything that Trevor said because I agree with it. It's way too early on the stream to go off the rails, but all I want to know now is about you fish are, cakes. You asked. Let's, let's do you some, asked. <laughs> let's do some <laughs> questions, and, and maybe I'll find out what a fish cake is. <laughs> Uh, Kane L is asking, 
Ship testing is great, but what is booster 11 status? Has the hot stage ring been installed? And when do we think it will roll? This is a good question because these two vehicles will be used for flight four. So it's, it's definitely uh, good to keep tabs on booster 11. Trevor? Yeah, so I'm not 100% sure the status of the hot staging ring, but we know that they've just been doing the, um, you know, work on the OLM, which seems to be probably the limiting factor of uh, the time until they can get booster 11 on the orbital launch mount. Um, so I think the expectation is that it'll roll within around a month after flight. So that's, what, three more weeks or so, two to three more weeks. So we, it has a little bit of time left where I'm sure they're doing retrofits and whatnot on it from lessons that they learned during the first flight. But uh, hopefully by, you know, mid-April, uh, we'll see the stack on, uh, we'll see the booster testing on the OLM and then shortly after that, the full stack testing. I do love me some full stack testing. But yeah, I would agree. The orbital launch mount does seem to be the limiting factor here. I bet as soon as it's ready, they'll roll Booster 11 out. Uh, Sean plays too much. Thank you for gifting a red team membership. Wilbo Tiberius Baggins, thank you for gifting the red team membership. And we remember you. Uh, the Nozzle, also gifting a red team membership. Thanks, y'all. So Eric Spittle says a fish cake is fish covered in breading. Or no, frosting. It's like, Ew. It's Ryan, what's, it's a like, what's a fish cake? I'm going to have to look up the Wikipedia definition here just to make sure that I do get it 100% correct. It kind it depends where you get it from. You can have low-end fish cakes, you can have high-end fish cakes, so, you know, your kind of processed kind of fish. It's not meat, is it? It's fish. But, you know, like the... Imagine, like, the inside of a chicken nugget, but it's a fish and it's a bit more mushy. That's like a fish cake, and then it's like got breaded, battery kind of stuff on the outside. It's a culinary dish consisting of filleted fish or other seafood minced or ground, mixed with a starchy ingredient and fried until golden, according you're, to Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. You are making me the opposite of hungry right now. Yeah, I. They're that very was more nice. than I ever wanted to, wanted to know. That was an Alex my, style answer in length. But it, but it was it's about my go -to not chip starship. Order. A couple of fish cakes, some some chips, and uh, some mushy peas. Can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. That is the most British thing That's I've fair. ever heard. Hey, don't. I mean, fish and chips is delicious. I just don't know about a fish cake. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, we ship twenty nine. We can discuss later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ship 29, we're not seeing frost yet, but we're keeping our eyes open for it. Again, the recondenser is going. It's that image you see on the right-hand side there. That is part of the methane uh, GSE that replaced the flare stack. RC Horseman just gifted five red team memberships. Thank you, RC Horseman. Richard Wardner wants to know, what does overpressure mean in this context? Thanks. Trevor, is it basically just a polite word for explosion, or are they actually talking about pressure here? Yeah, so I assume what they're alluding to is the overpressure notice that Mary uh, was given. And Mary is one of the few people um, that gets these, um, at least few public people that gets these notices where uh, she gets one on her door saying between, you know, X and Y time on this day, SpaceX may have an overpressure event, um, you know, be cautious during these times. and. Uh, what that overpressure means, as Jack was alluding to, is vehicle go boom. Because uh, if vehicle go boom, that could create some pretty serious shockwaves, which could, um, you know, quite likely break glass and whatnot in the vi in the uh, village. So that's just they send out these letters uh, to be safe. They want to make sure that um, no one is injured. So better safe than sorry. Indeed. Safety first. Let's see. What next? 
Jacob Hop is asking, if the intention is to catch a starship on the chopsticks, how do we intend to land on Mars before building a tower there? I mean, it's the same way we land on the moon before building a tower there, right? The moon variant has legs. The Mars variant will be right. especially hard, though, since you have not only to deal with landing legs, but also a heat shield. When at least on lunar variant, you don't have to worry about a darn atmosphere in the way. All right, Trevor is coming out against the atmosphere. We, we have a new Trevor take. <laughs> Does not like atmosphere. But no, that's a very good point. The lunar variant doesn't have the heat shield, and the Mars version will, and they're going to have to figure out legs. But you know what? If the space shuttle could have landing gear behind its main heat shield, then I think they'll figure it out. Yeah, I think that by the time SpaceX even attempts a Mars mission, they're going to have uh, 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 tens, if not hundreds of Starship flights entering Earth's atmosphere under their belt, which of course is thicker than Mars's atmosphere. So theoretically, Mars's atmosphere should be easier to cope with. So if they can nail Earth's atmosphere, then I think they probably have a good chance of nailing Mars's. Nice. Good call. Lyle Schustein is asking, is SpaceX finished building the tank farm at the launch site? Are they, are they ever really finished building the tank farm? It's like the tank farm of Theseus at this point. SpaceX hasn't even finished building the tank farm at like 39A or Slick 40. They're constantly making minor tweaks to further increase Falcon's cadence. And that's with a rocket that's had, you know, hundreds of launches. So this tank farm is nowhere, nowhere near its final form, if final form is even a thing. This isn't even my final form! Did you just do a reference without even meaning it? What? Moving on. <laughs> Christian Shea is asking, Why do we think the flame trail on launches is so much longer than, say, the hops or even the single raptor tests? Is, air pres is it air pressure or just that many raptors at once? I mean, I, I think with all rockets as they in ascend into the atmosphere, the plume not only expands, but appears to get longer. Like, every time I see a Falcon 9 launch, I am astounded by the sheer length of the column of flame coming out of the back of the vehicle. Uh, yeah. Trevor, do you have some kind of science-y reason for this? Or Ryan, go. Hmm. My best I... guess would be that ground testing has the ground in the way, and that's the limit to my knowledge, so I'm sure Trevor has something much more insightful. Yeah, but I mean, even when you look at, like, the horizontal stand in McGregor, um, the flames are, the length of the flame is definitely less than what we saw with Super Heavy during flight. My guess would be there's some really weird pressure interactions between the rings of engines. And one of the, you know, coolest parts of that is we get the Mega Mach Diamond, and I wouldn't be surprised if the outer 20 engines kind of shield the um, inner 13 from pressure, allowing those to extend even like further down. But I really don't know. I have I am not a fluid dynamics person. You're not. You said you were. Well, then I lied. That's not nice to do, Trevor. I'm sorry. How how dare me? <laughs> uh, I'm trying. I'm really trying to keep things on the rails here. Let's see. I swear. Coco Cats, thanks for gifting a red team membership. Greg Dietz, thank you for the super chat. They say it looks like Ship 29 lost a lot of tiles during static fire. True? Or were they missing before the static fire? Uh, we talked about this on the stream for that static fire, and it does look like it lost, I don't know, five or six, give or take. In the context of thousands, like tens of thousands of tiles, that uh, that feels not okay to me, but feels fine. I, I mean, I think we've seen marked progression with adhesion throughout all of these Starship static fire tests ever since they've been putting the heat shield tiles on. Ryan, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I, it, I don't think I can really say what you just said any differently. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Do you think they will lose more on today's test? I would not say they... I think there's a higher chance they will than they won't, if I can put it that way. Yeah, that makes sense. Trevor, what do you think? Um, I would say they definitely will lose more on today's static fire, but keep in mind, they haven't done the thorough inspection of the heat shield yet like they did with Ship 28 uh, ahead of IFT-3. So I, I wouldn't be too worried about it, um, right? We saw from those beautiful onboard shots of IFT-3 that they really didn't lose that many tiles during ascent. Like the heat shield was in quite good condition. Um, so I think once they do that inspection, then then it's a problem if they start losing tiles. But at this point, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I would agree. It's not the end of the world. I mean, obviously you want to see all the tiles stay on, but it's a problem being worked. And this is a test program. And you're looking at a prototype rocket that just so happens to be sitting on the side of a road that we can watch and analyze every little individual thing. Mr. Rich Texas, thank you for gifting 10 Red Team memberships. That's very generous of you. If you're getting a gifted membership, be sure you thank the person that gifted it to you. Such as Bideford. Thank you, Bideford, for gifting 5 Red Team memberships. Awesome. Always seeing your name pop up. And Josh Zero, they say, add a little nitroglycerin will make a nice boom. No, we don't want booms today. We want controlled engine firings. Comrade NR2207 is asking, how are you with the flight patch for flight four? Uh, is patch number three returning to the store? I didn't get it on time. We still have pat flight four patches. Uh, we do not have flight three patches when I don't think they're coming back, at least not anytime soon. So if you ever want a patch, um, we order them in limited quantities and I'm sorry you didn't get it on time, but there will be more patches, just probably not flight three. Taking a closer look at the heat shield. Starship is such a beautiful rocket. By the way, just to clarify, um, I think you misspoke. We do not have Flight 4 patches. We have not released Flight 4 patches yet. We have Flights 1 and 2 left in stock. Flight 3 is out of stock. And Flight 4 is probably soon. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Flight 3, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Yarno, the Belgian guy, is saying, when will we see Starship landing test... Uh, landing Starship into its lift oil rig will be revolutionary. Liftoff rig. There are no more oil rigs. I don't know. Trevor, when do you think we're going to see Starship landing? I guess on the chopsticks? Hmm. I... I really don't know. Is First, we'll definitely see them getting booster back Recovering booster will help their launch cadence significantly more than ships, um, at least to start. Uh, so, honestly, like I could see them starting to do a lot more testing with the chopsticks for a booster catch this year. But Starship, I would imagine, is probably more like later next year if they get there. But I, I, I still don't see how they're exactly going to. Um, catch the ship with ship with chopsticks that seems incredibly difficult more so than the booster yeah because i mean you have to survive re-entry and um once yeah you the survive, slip and burn of course yeah it seems like the level of precision needed will be harder on ship than it will be for booster i'm really worried about the heat shield because it just feels like it, it, we, we, uh, especially in the early days of the old two-point lifter, we could see they just demolished some of those tiles. The new two-point lifter is, you know, a bit better, but, you know, still, 
when you have a flying object and you're trying to catch it with massive metal arms and you have, you know, relatively kind of, not weak, brittle maybe is the correct word, I'm not sure, but, you know, you, you wouldn't want to hit those tiles with something because they would be damaged. Yeah, I mean, it's a fair thing to worry about. I forgot about the old two-point lifter. Now we have two-point lifter 2.0. Uh, the two-point lifter squared. Nice. Let's see, we did that question already. Tommy Time is asking, what is all the white on the heat shield? Is it damaged? I think you're seeing the underlying material when a tile, tile falls off. Uh, and yeah, there's some missing tiles, as we have been talking about. You also might be confusing that there's a black tank at the suborbital tank farm, which has some uh, paint missing. You might also be confusing the back of the starship for, the, for that tank, because I did that before we went live, um, and I got very worried for a second. Um, but there is a black tank at the tank farm, which has paint stripped. I don't know, Kevin, nudge nudge. Yeah, you can see other the one. well. You... Other other Traeger coming. <laughs> <laughs> nudge, nudge. Thank you. <laughs> there you go on the left. That's not the ship on the left. That's a that's a black tank with some paint missing. Thanks, Ryan. That's a tank, not a ship. Uh, one of the key elements of tank watching is being able to discern tanks from ships. So, excellent. And in the early days, they were the same thing. <laughs> Still kind of are. <laughs> uh, Spherical Cow is asking how many RCS thrusters Ship 29 has uh, and saying it doesn't seem like it has very many uh, I don't even know that they're like everything is fully installed yet after these static fire tests they're going to roll Ship 29 back to the production site and do all the things to get it fully ready for launch so maybe we'll see some the addition of some thrusters at that point or uh, I don't know Trevor what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it'll also be interesting to see what, if any, changes to the RCS system they make following data gathered on the last flight. Because it's very obvious that they did not have attitude control of ship uh, during the latter portion of um, time on, on orbit, if you want to call it an orbit. Um, and they even kind of confirmed that on their website saying that that was the reason why they cancelled the Raptor in space uh, demonstration uh, when they wanted to ignite a single center engine. Um, so we, I don't think we have a good idea. On Ship 28 there were several RCS thrusters in the engine bay, if I remember correctly, then some on the nose cone, and then a few cowbells. Were there cowbells on the tank? I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, they're kind of hidden, and as Jack said, very likely to have a lot more work done to them. I think it had cowbells. There's been so many vehicles that it's hard to keep yeah. track of all of the little tiny changes. Yeah, I know Booster did, but for some reason, ship is yeah. escaping my memory. Oh, Alex is saying the cowbells were on the nose cone. There you go. Yeah, I remember distinctly them kind of like venting when we were doing the wet, uh, covering the wet dress rehearsals and stuff. But yeah, none on the rocks tank. There's so many little things that we see SpaceX iterate with, like the Starlink antennas on the ship and the booster, the <laughs> the HPUs and the HPU covers. Like the vehicles have already changed so much over such a short phase of prototyping just a couple of years i'm really excited to see what a starship looks like i don't know even just a couple years into the future i bet they look so cool do they not look so cool and already no they do but they'll just look so cooler i mean I, an original iphone still looks cool but the the new ones look cooler that's fair. Um, I hear I hear some doubt in your voice. I mean, I don't have the like same nostalgia for the original iPhone, but 
I do remember thinking that like iPod touches and all that were crazy. Nerd. <laughs> Ryan was a Zune kid. Ryan probably doesn't even know what Zune is. I don't. <laughs> oh, I, I actually do know what a Zune is. <laughs> let's let's move on. <laughs> I, we could go down this road, but let's let's talk about Starship. Uh, here's a really important question. CF Flyboy is asking, how many fish cakes could a Starship carry? Ryan, we expect you to do the math. Uh, I it depends on the mass of your fish cake, how big it is. Uh, but assuming a, a just, fish cake just, that's roughly just the term grams, an average, it yeah, would there be you approximately go. one million plus or minus. I don't know, twenty percent. Would they be volume constrained or mass constrained at that point? There, I think you could probably squish them down, put them in a hydraulic press or something, if there is a volume constraint there. SpaceX Hydraulic Press Channel collab when? Uh, Jeff Rowe, thanks for gifting a Red Team membership. Mary Old Elf, thank you for gifting five Red Team memberships. Donald becoming a Red Team member. And Concrete Vent, aka Grass Vent, becoming. or no, gifting a Red Team membership. Y'all, the membership program is so important. And we appreciate every single one of you for supporting us because it, we really couldn't do what we do without that support. Um, the amount of, of, I guess the right word is infrastructure that we have in place, not only at Starbase, but also at Kennedy Space Center and the ability to deploy things and, and do our very best to bring you uh, the best stream we can. It's, it's all thanks to your support. So thank you. And even if you can't support us monetarily or don't want to, that's completely cool because, hey, guess what? You might get a gifted membership. And also, we like you just the same. We just appreciate everyone being excited about spaceflight and Starship and hopefully a bright future with lots of cool rockets. Stan wants to know when SpaceX is going to do point to point. So I'm... I'm Asking this so that Chris B is happy. We already did shuttle. Now we have yeah. to talk about point to point, and then we'll talk about horses later. Uh, so mm -hmm. we so we all keep our jobs. But Ryan, what, it's in what our do you think we're going to get that to? We point have to, point? to talk about shuttle, it is. point to point, and horses. Um, it is. I, I, the, the first thing that's going to come is going to be like an experimental crew rating, which means it's just going to be trained professionals flying on Starship thinking Polaris Dawn uh, not Polaris Dawn, dear me Polaris 3 uh, and there will also be obviously the HLS missions but I have a feeling HLS is going to be done differently because there's a difference between having a crew spacecraft operate in space entirely and having a crew spacecraft operate through re-entry so we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out if they're licensed differently so yeah, I, it's going to be trained professional astronauts flying on Starship first, when Starship first starts to carry crew. I think it's definitely not going to be a near-term thing for SpaceX. However, I think it'll definitely be once Starship ha it has essentially become operational in the same sense as an aeroplane, everyday people can fly on Starship okay with a little bit of training and a little bit of information about it. Um, Loud vent. Thanks, SpaceX. Uh, point to point. I have a hot take here, and I have a feeling point to point might become a thing first on the moon and or Mars before it does on Earth, because the moon and Mars currently do not have aeroplanes. They don't, the moon can't have aeroplanes. The, they, they, don't, they don't have train lines. They don't have pre-built infrastructure. Starship <laughs> and other vehicles that fly through space is going to be the only way to get around in a quick manner. If not, you're going to have to drive to the other side of that celestial body. And that's going to take ages because on the moon, you have a sixth of the Earth's gravity. You can't drive very fast. If not, you're going to flip your rover over. You know, you've, I, point to point is going to be vital for uh, transportation on the moon and Mars before we can get that infrastructure, uh, the ground-based infrastructure running. So, you know, I think, I think that's definitely going to be before Earth or more important than Earth, in my opinion. I had never thought of that, but that makes a lot of sense. 
Your ideas are interesting to me, and I would like to subscribe to your newsletter. That's good. There's a little button down below. You can press that. <laughs> Oops, I closed the stream. Uh, Trevor, what do you think? How long is this going to take? Like, a decade? Point to point? For yeah. um, Starship to basically replace all airplanes. I'm not saying... No, no, no. Just to be used in that function. Okay, used in that function. Hmm. Even a decade seems soon, to be honest. <laughs> but... Well, that's fair. I don't know. Maybe in a decade I could see it happening, but that seems optimistic. But for airliner-like operations where it's basically replacing airliners, I... I really don't see that ever being a thing. I don't think point, yeah, to point I mean, will it's... ever replace airplanes because airplanes didn't yeah. replace ships in the sea. You know, you can still you can get a transatlantic right. flight and you can still get a transatlantic voyage. I mean, it's it's less rare. It's much more popular in terms of cargo operations, but they still exist. Yeah, but I think Starship has the fundamental problem of. I mean, first of all, like you're getting at, it won't be as efficient uh, in terms of fuel economy, which therefore leads to cost. But also, it's just so loud. I don't think many people want starships launching every 10 minutes in their backyard. Yeah, all valid points. All right, so we can see some wispy condensation and some frost on the LOX tank there. That means liquid oxygen is flowing into the vehicle, and we're into propellant load. So the clock is ticking. Alex is predicting a test at 1.30 based on the data that he has. So just about 40 minutes away-ish, hopefully, from another Raptor engine firing here in Starbase. Alex is too good at this. Like, he predicted the frost. Yeah, I'm... He predicted the T0 on Monday's test within, like, a minute or something. It's... Alex, you're good. I, I think, yeah, I think we can all agree Alex good. <laughs> you see, even Ship 29 agrees. <laughs> Flippers, 79 Flip Diaz, thanks for gifting a Red Team membership. I feel like that's another name we see pop up all the time. Josh Zero, thank you for the super chat. They say, but the booms, think about the booms. <laughs> uh, I do not. So, Ryan, how do I pronounce this name? Uh... I'm going to give it my best crack. I apologize if this is wrong. Uh, Guillaume de Macy. De Masky. De Marcy. You did a far better job than, than I would have been able to, so thank you. Uh, thanks for the super chat. They say, how small of a landing circle does the booster need to, to achieve to be successfully caught by the chopsticks? I mean, pretty small. I don't know what it would be in feet. I would guess somewhere between like 10 and 30 meters. And that's probably way too generous. 30 meters? That would be really bad. That's like way, way less precise than Falcon 9. Less accurate, sorry. Well, my, um, what I'm thinking is, is how wide can the chopsticks open at their max? Like, what is that distance? That's That's the distance I'm trying to come up with in meters, which I have... No idea what it actually would be, but I know it's more than nine because that's the diameter of Starship. So I'd there's my line of thinking my, there. But in my head, it looks like three x the width of Starship. So I'm just going to say 27 meters, maybe 30 meters. I. But do you th really think that the chopsticks are meant to kind of like move the vehicle around if they're like, if it's way to the left, let's say, in that 27 meters that you're giving it, 
I do not think that the chopsticks could still really catch the vehicle. I think it needs to be more in the center. It depends how fast. I think you're move. probably right. Uh, but also, yes, it, exactly, Ryan. It depends on how fast they're they're meant to move during this process. I. I I think Trevor you're you're not wrong. Like 30 meters would be far worse than Falcon 9 and I don't expect that, but I I guess until we see the Chop 6 catch a booster I'm I'm still wondering exactly how that process happens, whether they're they're wide open or whether they're like already close together and ready to just snug up against the booster as the booster threads the needle between them. Um I got I really can't wait till SpaceX starts the test this because it's going to be so yeah. crazy to see. Yeah. And I was thinking about it the other day. Like, these chopsticks is like the Booster 4 version of the chopsticks, right? Imagine till we see the Booster 100%. 10 or the Booster 11 version of the chopsticks. Just thinking about that in my mind. Like, these chopsticks are of the Booster 4 Ship 20 era. And Booster 7 could barely fly. Yeah. Think what Booster 4 would have done. <laughs> you know, just yeah. you've got to kind of think about it in that way. It seems like the chopsticks have been around forever, but they're kind of they're kind of cranky old things at this point. We love the chopsticks, but let's be honest, they are a bit old at this point. No, that's, a, still... that's a really good point to make. I mean, in the same way that the chopsticks are, you know, Booster 4 vintage, same with the OLM. Like, we were talking about this on the last stream, in terms of how many, like, what sort of cadence can the... Yes, Ship 29, we see your frost rising, we'll talk about you in a second. Uh, what kind of launch cadence can they support from the OLM, given that it seems to be very much a version 1? So, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, Ryan. I can't wait to see what the, as you say, Booster 11 version of the chopsticks looks like, or the mount, or the tank farm. I mean, even... Even the tank farm has been drastically upgraded over time. And now they can load propellant into a full stack in like 45, 50 minutes. It's insane. We'd love to see progress here. Uh, we're coming up on engine chill, so we will keep a close eye out for that. Based on Alex's spreadsheets and timeline. No official information from SpaceX, but Alex has just gotten scarily good. Reminds me of Adrian uh, back with the the low altitude flights, like predicting firings. Oh, I, I love this. I love that we're able to just sit on the side of the road here via these robotic cameras and divine what's going on <laughs> through nothing other than observation. Yeah, even before Adrian did all of his spreadsheets for... Um, figuring out T-Zeros when he had the car counting spreadsheets because his Twitter or X handle is still Boca Chica car counters. That's like such a throwback. <laughs> it is. I love it. Good old-fashioned roadside rocket science. JK Video... Thank you, Ship29. JK Video, thanks for the super chat. They say estimate for when launch, or estimate for when launch will happen. I'm going to say mid May. Trevor? Hmm. I think. Late May. Actually, Ryan? Mid May. I am, uh, I, I, I want it to be in June because it'd be nice to have, you know, just, just a little bit of some downtime just to, you know, catch my breath, maybe, but I don't think SpaceX cares about my opinion, so I think they're definitely going to be gunning for mid-May, however, I would really appreciate mid-June if you are watching SpaceX. Super Steph, thank you for the super chat and all you do. Uh, they say Adrian Spider Fund. Hooray! Hopefully we get some more spiders on uh, on the cameras today, and we can send screenshots to Adrian, and he can be very happy about it. Continuing to watch for engine chill. 
at this point. Ship 29 has liquid oxygen in its tank and likely liquid methane as well. Uh, Thomas Smith, thank you for coming a Red Team member. Josh Zero, thank you for the super chat. They say Dragon Capsule strapped upside down on a super heavy booster. Uh, sounds like we have some more Kerbal crimes for multi space to commit. <laughs> Iron Man, thank you for gifting a Red Team membership. Snot Garden, thank you for the super chat. They say, love the consistently thoughtful, entertaining commentary. I would like to subscribe to your newsletter is better than a sternly warded grammar correction. <laughs> and Snot Garden gifting five Red Team memberships. Thanks, bud. Tom5. It's, it's actually Tom V, but I'm going to go with Tom5. Thanks for gifting a Red Team membership. Chris Barrow becoming a pad rat member. Nick Salve, thank you for the super chat. They say, is there going to be a second orbital tank farm to support the second launch tower, or will the current set of GSC support both launch mounts? Nick, you are asking the question many of us are asking. Um, we don't know. It could be connected into the existing, the existing tank farm, which could be expanded, or there could be a completely separate tank farm. Either way, expect all of this at least I expect all of this suborbital infrastructure to go away, to be replaced by the second pad. I don't know, Trevor, do you think there'll be two tank farms or, or one megalithic tank farm? I think to start, probably one, and then longer term expand it. Because right now, it seems like the OLM pad turnaround is on the order of a month. So if you have two of those, you could be you know your math your maximum theoretical cadence would be every two weeks or so so let's say they cut down the olm in the short term they've cut down olm turnaround time to like two weeks which seems quite reasonable then that's still only one launch a week and i think they could probably safely refill the um the current tank farm or a tank farm of this size in around a week so that would be my guess, but I could, I could easily see them also just starting off with two. Ryan, what do you think? Uh, a second... Thanks, GSC. You know, trying to talk about the tank farm. The tank farm's making noise. Um... Uh, the, an expansion is undoubted, in my opinion. Whether it's classed as a second tank farm, I'm not sure. SpaceX and their naming convention seems to change every five minutes. At least that's kind of what it feels like looking in from the outside. So I think maybe, I don't know if there's going to be a, a mega tank farm, a mega farm, I don't know. <laughs> there will definitely be an expansion. Uh, it, it, whether it is designated as a separate thing entirely is a different question. I think just uh, uh, having a massive plot of tanks, I, I think it would look quite cool. Um, yeah. That's probably where I'm going to have to leave off my thoughts. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how they proceed. Because it's definitely... SpaceX has never had two pads as close together as these pads will be. And I really yeah. don't know how what would be more efficient. I think Rocket Lab, right, they have pads really close together at the yeah. New Zealand launch complex. And they mm -hmm. have dedicated tank farms, so... Yeah. But Electron, you know, as we saw on the, on the, on the overlay graphic on the launch stream, Electron's about the height of the booster's chine, so... <laughs> it's a slightly different scale of vehicle <laughs> with electron. Yeah. Very true. Uh, Adrian is asking, I don't think this is our Adrian, uh, but Adrian is asking, how soon do you think SpaceX will shift to static files 
uh, will shift static fires to the Massey's test site. Uh, Trevor, how long do we think we've got until until static fires move over to Massey's? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we've seen SpaceX preparing a lot of infrastructure down there for it. I think just the other day we saw some of the elements for a water-cooled flame diverter um, that or flame trench slash diverter that they're moving out there. So knowing SpaceX's speed, that could easily be, you know, just a year or so, maybe even less until they have the capability of performing static fires um, down there. What I'm not as confident about is I believe that their current environmental assessment does not permit the firing of Raptor engines at the Massey's launch site. So it is definitely, it seems possible to me that SpaceX will have to go through another environmental assessment for static firing at Massey's. And we saw from the environmental assessment that had, that had to happen ahead of flight one, and then also uh, between flights one and two, um, that with the Fish and Wildlife Service, that that can take a little while. So if I was to guess, that may be the limiting factor. However, I am not educated enough on that regulation to know exactly what is and isn't required. Yeah. My, my hope is that... Thanks, Tank Farm. My hope is that static fires stay at the launch site for, you know, a good while longer because Massey's is, is, is a bit secluded, it's a bit hidden behind the bushes, so it's difficult to see what goes on there unless you're flying over and... Um, we can't, I don't think anyone, any any of us can, in fuel economy, at least afford to fly a plane 24-7 so we can <laughs> stream static fires. Great. Yeah, I, I do hope we, we get some more static fires on Pad B. If the stand at Massey's comes online soon, this could be the last one we see on it. Um, but speaking of the static fire we're expecting to see today, uh, Alex is saying that the timeline of fueling and everything that we've seen so far tells us that this is the same in-space burn test that we saw on Ship 26 and Ship 28. So this should be a single-engine Raptor firing uh, similar to the tests that we saw done on Ship 26 and Ship 28 to simulate the burn that SpaceX wants to uh, test out doing on flight four in space. That's the they were trying to do it on flight three. They they aborted or the ship computers aborted due to the roll control. So uh, or the, due to the loss of roll control. So another uh, another one of these tests on the ground and another one of these tests hopefully up in space. And this is. Um even further confirmation that this will be a single engine, since all of those previous tests that have followed this profile have been single engine. Um, and Alex is explaining some of the reasoning for that. He's saying, during those tests, it took about 10 minutes from frost appearing on the vehicles to engine chill starting, just as what happened today. In a regular static fire, it takes closer to 40 minutes. Yeah, and you can even see significantly less frost on the LOX tank as compared to Monday's test. So uh, significantly less propellant loaded on the vehicle even. I mean, just a, a very different test visually from what we can see. So yeah, in space burn test, let's go. Is there a engine firing at Stennis right now or did that already happen? I know there's one today. <laughs> uh, Chris said six minutes at four minutes past, so we've probably got about three minutes to go on that one. Awesome. Multiple engine tests going on around the country today. The RS-25 about to be tested at good old Stennis, so maybe we'll throw that in a pip or something. Yeah. It's a shame we haven't got Stennis we've got a little It's a good thing that Stennis streams their tests, but, you know, there you go. There's, there's the standard. There's hey! Stennis, we need to give Das another job to do. Stennis Live. Stennis Live. 
Vandenberg Live, uh, Kodiak Live, Wallops Live. <laughs> I think <laughs> Doss is like having a seizure right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mahia Live. Corn Cornwall Live? I don't know, uh, maybe not. Baikonur Live. Yes. Tenegishima Live. <laughs> Doss says he'd be happy to set them all up. You hear that, members? <laughs> Except Your Cornwall. Support. Excuse me, Das. Excuse me. <laughs> Deary me. Awesome. So based on the timeline, we are expecting a single engine static fire at 1.30 lo local time. That's central uh, daylight time. That's about uh, 21 minutes from now. And again, these are rough estimates. There could be holds. Um, maybe I shouldn't say rough estimates. These are predictions based on data that Alex and others have painstakingly gathered. So that's what we're looking at. There, there could be changes. Um, but next up, we're going to be looking for... Uh, I love the sound of the venting. We're going to be looking for, um, or I guess listening for, that 10-minute siren. And hopefully we will see a static fire in like 20 minutes. But you know what? We don't have to wait 20 minutes because there's an RS-25 test here in just a few minutes. Trevor, how do, how do you feel about hydrolocks? Oh. There it is. There it is. Um, hydrolocks makes zero sense on a first stage. Like, it, I do not understand why, for example, Delta decided or on the Delta family rockets, why they're like, oh yeah, you should have a Hydrolox first stage. It's, it does not make sense from an efficiency perspective. Um, but for second stages, I mean, there's no arguing with the... Um, Is that somebody closing a laptop, like, blurry in the foreground? <laughs> I was like, what on earth? Very cool. So that'll be... Oh, it's a wiper. There's a wiper on the camera lens because of all the <laughs> condensation created. It's because of the rain machine. Neat. <laughs> so that is going to be, like, an eight-minute burn. <laughs> we'll let you know how it went. Always love to see... Some RS twenty fives firing though, but Trevor, I'll, I'll give you a chance to answer again. How do you feel about Hydrolox? I guess we can frame it. How do you feel about Hydrolox versus Methalox? Yeah, sorry. I um, apparently the audio from the firing was louder than I thought. So sorry for talking over it when you couldn't hear me. Um, I, I don't know. Hydrolox is definitely an interesting fuel. Like on second stages, um, especially when you look at for interplanetary missions and whatnot, there is no, there is no questioning that it is a phenomenal choice. Like, look at how efficient ULA Centaur stages compared to um, Falcon second stage compared to, especially Starship, 
um, or basically any other second stage out there. But it makes no sense to me on a first stage. It definitely confuses me as to why, for example, Delta IV Heavy, which has its final launch tomorrow, um, in just about 24 hours actually, um, it confuses me as to why they decided to have an all hydrogen first stage on there. It is just not efficient from uh, a Delta V equation point of view. Um, but compared to Methalox, it definitely has advantages in second stage, disadvantages in first stage, um, and is definitely hard to deal with. Dang old hydrogen being all tricky. Ryan, any strong feelings? Hydrolox, Methalox? Um, I'll be honest, not really. Hydrolox uh, is a bit of a pain. We've seen how many times it's scrubbed shuttle. We've seen how many times it's scrubbed SOS. We've seen how many times it's scrubbed Delta Four Heavy. Delta. That's a nudge, wink, wink. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, Methalox, at least for SpaceX at the moment, seems like it's... Uh, you know, there's no ground umbilical carrier plate that scrubs every other launch, so... Yeah, that... The ground umbilical carrier plate it just sends shivers through rocket watchers of a certain age. It just... <laughs> it's just not a good four words. Getting a nice close look at ship 29 there. Now, we could see some venting around now that would look like a depress vent, uh, but it is not. It's the same sort of, it, it's something we've seen on the previous in-space burn tests. I remember the very first one, we were kind of like, oh, is it aborting? And then, you know, there was an engine firing. <laughs> so, uh, if we see those vents, which I expect we will, do not fret. Just everything is, is going like clockwork so far. Hopefully a static fire in the next 14 minutes or so. Eric Frazier, thank you for the support and for always hanging out in chat. Uh, they say the bus for Stennis is leaving in five minutes. Will we, will we be showing the Ship 29 stream on the bus? Oh, that's awesome. Brianna Matthews, thanks for the support. They say, hey guys, uh, how sad panda will you all be when SpaceX starts to static fire ships at Massey's? Will it be difficult to watch? I mean, it'll be a change for sure, but I'm not super worried about it. Uh, with y'all's support, we can do some pretty cool things. And you know what? I think, uh, I think we're up to the challenge. And on the other hand... Peter, thank you for gifting... Go ahead when that starts happening, that'll just mean more and more Starship launches, which I think we all want. Right. Yeah, I mean, it'll mean second pad. It'll mean yeah. Starship is that much further along. So, you know what? If we trade static fires for a whole bunch of full stack launches, <laughs> that's not a bad trade. But, yeah. I still say don't count Massey's out. Peter Thompson, thank you for gifting a Red Team membership. Ryan B, becoming a Red Team member. In honor of all of our new Red Team members, I'm going to spam chat with... Hmm... Some Raptor engines. For today's test. If you're a member, you get members emoji. I cannot stress that enough. And they're cool. So, hey, I'm going to throw some Marses in there as well. Um, Ryan B, thank you. Robert Vansel, thank you for your support. They say, I wasn't wrong about the T, and thank you for getting my name right. Is this a, is this a thing that I'm missing, Ryan? It, it says T, uh, so I assume it's, it's about you. Um, I'm not sure. All right, well, Robert, at me in chat uh, when it calms down, because it's going crazy right now. Sorry, chat mods. <laughs> And, uh, and explain yourself. 
Ryan B, thank you for the support. They say, are they still planning on using refurbished oil platforms for future launches? No, they sold those. They no longer own oil platforms that we know about. At least not in the short Ron term. Smith. Long term, I could see them right. wanting some the capability, but that's a ways out. Yeah, I mean, I would not be surprised to see the autonomous spaceport drone ship equivalent for Starship at some point, and I would not be surprised if that ends up being some sort of platform, uh, oil platform, or oil platform-like device. But it doesn't seem like anytime soon. Ron Smith, thank you for the support. They say, money for Wallops Live, please. I mean, we joke, but for real, if we had unlimited support, you better believe <laughs> we would have unlimited cameras. <laughs> Richard Williams, thank you for gifting 10 Red Team memberships. Joe Howard, thank you for gifting 5. Bob Fillmore, also gifting 5. Y'all are the best. Whole bunch of new members from today's stream. And Telstar86, thank you for the support. They say, when do we think Booster 11 will be at the pad? I'm going to go with last bit of April. Trevor, what do you think? Let's see. It is the 27th of March. I think probably closer to mid-April. Um, it's based on what SpaceX has said and the FAA has said and Gwen has said, it really doesn't seem like they'll need to make that many changes to either vehicle. So hopefully they won't have to spend a lot of time doing retrofits like they had to do between flights one and two and flights two and three. Yeah, fingers crossed. Ryan, when do you think? Alongside my hope of a June launch, I'm going to say May. Wow, okay. Why do you hope June specifically? Because I want a break. Definitely not so the launch doesn't fall on the NSF Leicester meetup. Got it. Ooh, breaking news! Mary is reporting that she has heard a siren. She said that at 1.20 p.m. local, so that tracks with the 1.30 p.m. local suspected firing time. So just under nine minutes to go till we see what we expect will be a single Raptor engine firing to simulate that in-space deorbit burn. Trevor, are you excited? A Raptor is about to fire at Starbase for Flight 4. That is just inherently exciting in my opinion. Even if it's not like as cool as it may have been like a year or two ago, it still is just like shows that these vehicles are suddenly becoming real. And that's exciting. It is indeed. I think just under the, like, dead in the middle of the stand there, I think one of them cranes is either at Massey's or at Rio West or down that way, which is kind of bonkers. I guess it's at the production site. I can't remember what the angle is. I, no, I, I think that would be Massey's. I think you're right. kind of bonkers how easy these things are to these how easy these things are to spot when you're in a very <laughs> a very flat area with uh, with luckily not a lot of fog out today it's not hazy really at all right right i mean it's crazy there are times when the sun sets out here it's so flat like you'll see the sun right on the horizon uh and i'm gonna sound like an idiot but you can look right at it without hurting your eyes uh or at least without feeling pain in your eyes <laughs> Maybe I'm doing damage. Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. It's 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 crazy. The what what you get with having an, a huge flat open area like this, seeing the sun on the horizon yeah. with the heat haze. It's it's pretty beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. And you know, was... you know from having been here, when you're when you're driving up, it's it's seeing the buildings loom in the distance. Yeah. When I was down there in October, I remember standing like uh, by our June uh, cameras on the on the June by the OAM, and there was Booster Nine at the time on the OAM. And I remember looking across, and I was like, "What's that thing on the horizon? Oh, it's Booster Ten." Because it was at Massey's, which was cool. Or it was Booster 11. It's pro I don't know, one of the two. Yeah. Pretty nifty. Looks like we're seeing some venting from the flap area from the header tanks. Just a little bit. Excellent. Look at this. It's beautiful. The vehicle has come to life. And there you can see the cowbells that we were talking about earlier. So there are some of the RCS thrusters at the top. I'm just entranced. I love seeing rockets come to life. I thought the vents were dying off then, but they just stopped for a brief moment and then reappeared. There's, what, there's like stuff, is that like a rope or something blowing across, <laughs> blowing across the entrance there to the road site? Uh, yeah, like a rope or maybe a caution tape? I can't quite yeah. see. <laughs> it looks like it's just gotten loose there in the wind. Mary is reporting that a drone is headed to the pad. Thank you for that, Mary. You know what, Ryan? Sometimes we're just a rope blown in the wind. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that analogy means. Don't worry about it. To remind everyone, this vent is expected for the burn that we're doing today. This is not a V-class. Good vent. I love how it ascends in pitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's whistling at us. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking much, I'm just enjoying the sound of this vent. Yeah. But once once again, do not fret, this is not a depressed vent as we typically see. This is something we've seen them do with the, uh, specifically with the in-space simulated burns. Roughly two and a half minutes to go. Mary saying that there's another drone up. Hopefully we get some cool imagery from SpaceX. Approximately just a couple minutes till Alex is predicted T0 now, so it's coming up. I just love that the predicted T0 lined up so perfectly with the siren. The siren is exactly 10 minutes from the predicted time, which is 1.30 local. 
and sometimes the sheriff is like a couple minutes late as well. So you know, that's good on Alex and the sheriff's part. As a reminder, the thing to start watching out for as we approach what we think the T0 is, is water coming on under the vehicle. It won't be much, but it'll be noticeable. I'm excited. I set a uh, slow-mo camera next to trailer and I can control it through trailer. And <laughs> I'm like, my, my mouse hand is sweating as I'm hovering the mouse over the record <laughs> button. <laughs> I don't even know, like, I don't know why this makes me so nervous every time, but what is my heart rate? 110? I'm just sitting still. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna record now. I'm just gonna record now. We're okay. close. It's like 30 seconds away from the predicted time. We should see water any second now. Keeping our eyes open for that water to come on. Go away, go away, red tape. I kind of like it. It's like one of those wacky arm, inflatable arm waving things. <laughs> He's starting to think maybe I rolled the slow mo too early. Uh. Come on, water. There it is. Beautiful. Look like a nice, clean, single engine firing, as expected. Hooray! Looks like about four or five seconds ish, roughly, if I can't it right in my head. Nice. Another test in the books here in Starbase, and you can see that <laughs> dust <Yeah>. cloud. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> Just a bunch of Mercifully debris just drifting across the away. landscape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. What a cool shot! Fantastic. Well, there you have it. A single engine Raptor test. Alex, I, I uh, is Alex a wizard? Trevor, yes or no? Um, no. He's just really smart, but pretends he's not. That was fantastic. <laughs> Aerobane, thank you for back. gifting a red team membership. Yeah, we're going to do some replays here. Uh, just stand by. Aerobane, thank you for gifting a red team membership. Ryan B, thank you for the super chat. They say, if, the, if they do start using deep sea platforms for launching, how will NSF cover those? Jeff Bezos' yacht? <laughs> Maybe he'd lend it. Uh, that's a good question. When NSF yacht? Probably never, because boats are... Marine assets suck. I'm sorry, Gav. Tony Z, thank you for the support. They say, one step closer today. Starship first payload equals cats. Starship second payload equals dogs. Starship's dock in orbit. Mayhem ensues. Awesome stream. Uh, wow. Talk about an imagination. So stand by. We'll take a look at some replays of the old static fire there. But by all accounts, I mean, it looked pretty dang clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, 
Apart from the dust cloud. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'm, inter I'm At interested. At least it drifted, if I... it drifted away from the trailer cameras, so that's yes, good. Yes, yes, that's a very good point. I'm wondering, I'm not sure if I can tempt any of the camera operators if we can have a look at the uh, kind of like the nose cone of the ship because I'm interested to see how much of the mid-bay dust is still uh, kind of bonded to the tiles. If you ever notice that Ship 29 looks a little bit more brown than, than usual, it's because its heat shield was exposed when SpaceX demolished the mid-bay all those months ago. So all that dust that got kicked up is now on Ship 29. Yeah, I'm curious to see if additional dust was shaken off by today's test, or if uh, it already kind of it, it already kind of got the majority of it. It was still on there pretty thick after the last static fire test, so it's a dusty ship. Just need a good. I wonder if we just need a good rainstorm or something to wash it off. That would be nice. It's been pretty hot the last couple of days. There we go. Still pretty dusty. <laughs> At least it will make it quite easy to point out where um, tiles have been replaced, if they need to be replaced. Because the old ones will be brown. <laughs> Don't worry, re-entry will clean it off nicely. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, thank you for gifting five red team memberships. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Ryan. Other Ryan, go ahead. Gonna, I was just going to say, in terms of like heat shield tiles sticking from this angle here. That's a clean ship. I can't spot a single tile that has fallen off from this angle. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. It looks... The heat shield looks to be about the same. I mean, the force of a single engine file fire versus a six engine fire is obviously very different, so... Perhaps all the ones that were going to fall oh. off fell off on Maybe Monday. <laughs> Maybe I spoke too soon, because uh, one that little one, naughty tile was hiding behind the ticker. <laughs> that one right there, sort of in between the flaps, is uh, that was missing on Monday. That fell off, on I think, on mon after Monday's firing, so... Okay. Let's that was not from today. Now. That's the little hole for the stabilizer right there. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. yeah. So we're looking okay so far. Well, it's a little bit of a mark. I think that was also like that after Monday's Monday's firing. That little scuff right there, like half tile missing. Oh, you can see the dust on the on the, on the aft flaps as well. <laughs> I wonder if it gets into space. You know, when we see like the images from flap cam. There'll just be not only ice floating around the vehicle, but a whole, a whole bunch of dust. <laughs> it looks like there's three or four next to each other in a gap there, next to the LR11000 weights, and then there's a there's some there's a set of three, a set of three, one tile, and then two next to each other. But I remember seeing them from uh, the six-engine static fire. So. Alex is saying he can't see any uh, any more ones. I can't see any more. Jack can't see any more. So I think it's probably safe to say, unless there's any on the from this perspective, like hiding around the left side of the ship. Looks like that was a pretty clean test for the heat shield tiles. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty stoked. That's what we wanted to see. Alfredo, thank you for gifting five red team memberships. Seriously, the amount of support on the stream has been outstanding. Thank you to everyone for gifting the memberships. It's such a nice thing to do. Uh, if you want to get a gifted membership and you haven't, I think it's based on like interaction in chat and also you have to have it turned on. So go into your YouTube settings and make yeah. sure you have... Uh, Ryan, what is the setting? It's like accept 
gifts or something I'm like that? I'm not sure because it, it's if, uh, there's there's. Uh, I'm trying to let, let me find English. Hang on. Okay, so it's, there's there's like a it's not it's not regulated, but there are rules around it. Like you can't accept them on brand accounts for some reason. So like my main account is technically classed as a brand account, which is annoying. So I can't accept any gifted memberships. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's determined by YouTube as long as you have it turned on. And like we can't pick who gets them. The person who gifts them doesn't pick who gets them. It's all based on watch time and if like the the people who watch the most but aren't members yet. So it give, it gifts it to them because they're our biggest supporters because they watch all the time. So it's only fair that they get them. And like we can't prevent anyone from getting one. So if you think that we're preventing you from getting one, then we can't. There's literally nothing we can do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. This was a good day for Raptor testing. We'll keep watching to see if the ship does anything else. Um, but let's do a couple more questions. How about? And don't wait, don't forget, we're also doing replays here in just a moment. Just just a Viking is asking, why not do a six engine static fire, pause, and then do a one engine deorbit static fire in one session? Would better simulate fright, flight profile? This is a really good question. My immediate thought is the amount of propellant loaded for a six engine firing is far more. And they would have to, like, I guess either vent or detank that in in between the two firings if they want, you know, tank levels at a certain amount for the deorbit firing, and that might, I, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm way out of my my scope here. Trevor, what do you think? Why not do this? The only thing that I can think of is the amount that the like the temperature is not going to be the same since it's going to get. I, I would imagine the sh ship will get warmer quicker on the surface of the Earth than it would when it's on orbit. So maybe it's just easier for them to properly simulate the conditions of the ship to actually wait uh, and just do it in a completely different test. But that that's actually a really interesting question. I don't know. Yeah, really good question from Just a Viking. Ryan, do you have any thoughts before we move on? No, I have to agree with Trevor there. I mean, I don't know whether it's just an operational procedure or a technical limitation with the, uh, you know, the fueling and unfueling, defueling process. Makes sense. Stephen O'Brien asking, when will the entire pad start spinning to replicate the in-flight conditions for the firing? <laughs> Sensible chuckle. Damfer... Damfer friend is asking, when do you think SpaceX will put Raptor 3 engines on a booster? Trevor, when Raptor 3? Ooh. Hmm. We really haven't seen any signs of it. Um, at least not that I've seen, because I think we're expecting when they upgrade to Raptor 3 for them to slightly reduce the number of engines on Booster. At least I think that was the plan that Elon had mentioned at one point. However, that very easily could have changed. Um... Elon was also talking about making Starship like 50 meters longer the other day, so yeah, then, yeah. things do change quite <laughs> regularly. But it is like one interesting thing though is on IFT3 webcast, um, not shot well, uh, Kate Tice and Shiva were talking about how in the future um, Starship is going to increase, or Super Heavy is going to increase its thrust by about 50%. They said it's now like over, maybe a bit less than 50%. They said it's now. Uh, about two times as powerful as Saturn V, and it'll eventually be three times. So, um, they definitely have plans for it. We just don't, we don't have a good idea of when. Yeah, 
soon TM is, is I guess my answer. Really excellent test today. Stand by for those replays. Also, we do have a daily that we released this morning, which had some footage from uh, Monday's Static Fire and just everything else that's been going on around Starbase. So if you haven't watched today's daily, bring that up in another tab and watch it once we wrap the stream. Uh, definitely, definitely good to keep on top of everything that's going on because SpaceX is not slowing down. They're doing the exact Kevin opposite, Rands. and it scares me a bit. In a good way? In a good way, but it also scares scares me. And like, oh, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to make things for the flight four stream, and it's only in a couple months. I know the you feeling. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin Rands, thanks for gifting a red team membership. Apocalypse Cow, thank you for gifting five red team memberships. And Andreas Barkanas, thank you for the support. They say, thoughts on Starship updates to stop tumbling before re-entry. Ryan, I'm going to go with you first on this one. Sorry, Trevor. Uh, I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to give you a very Kerbal answer. I just think that they need a lot of uh, uh, stability assist reaction wheels. Stack them up in the payload bay. That should sort out your problem. Or just add yeah, more just RCS. load up. Just load up the payload bay with reaction wheels. But yeah. then you're going to need more batteries to power them. So get, then maybe no, like throw get on the radial, some... Get the radial attached batteries and put it in like 8x symmetry. And then you just spam them around the outside. Your power solution is just sorted. Prob yeah, problem solved. Better watch out. You're going to get hired by SpaceX, Ryan. Oh, and I'm going to go join uh, <laughs> Thomas, Chris, and Michael. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we build rockets. <laughs> Brings up Kerbal. <laughs> Samuel Connolly, thank you for the, or for the question. They're saying, how difficult would it be to expand Starship or Super Heavy in the diameter axis? I mean, difficult in the sense that it would require all new GSE. And construction rigs. Because if you think about it, as they unfurl, each ring section is made from like a, a steel coil. So I'm sure they could make a 12-meter ring section. But you'd need a 12-meter stand, and then 12-meter transport stands, and then space to fit 12 meters in the, in the high bays, and then a 12-meter OAM, and then 12-meter... You know, so everything that a, a ring, tank, or ship ever sits on, or booster ever sits on, would have to be expanded, which would be, you know, that's quite a colossal effort. Not impossible, right. but colossal. Yeah, and the infrastructure, in, like you said, throughout the entirety of Starbase is sized for 9-meter ships. Both the size of the bays, the size of the doors, the size of the stands, everything, so... Uh, well, we have replays. Let's watch replays. All right, first up, we got Highway. Birds vacating very quickly. As is tradition. And there goes the dust cloud. And there goes, <laughs> yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. There goes the dust cloud. <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so stupidly funny. I don't know why. It's brilliant. Uh, there's, there's certain things about Starship that are just, uh, I, I don't know, cartoony, for, for the lack of a yeah. better word. I think the dust, the dust cloud is, is very much a part of that. This is beautiful. There's another shot from the trailer cam. Very clearly a single engine firing. Yeah. It's a shame that SpaceX parked a United Rentals tiger handler in the way. But it's still a good shot. Yeah. It's also in my slow-mo. But you know what? It is what it is. At least it's orange. It's orange! Here's another angle.
Nice, clean firing. Clean in air quotes, given the dust. Yeah. I love how you can see uh, the um, the steam, because it's water, like, kind of pushing up against the berm and then spilling over a little bit as it rises. Truly a sight to behold. It'll never get old that we can just sit here and watch these tests. I love it. Mm-hmm. And there goes the dust cloud. Excellent stuff. Ooh, the shot is from atop the Margaritaville Hotel on South Padre Island. Shout out to them for being awesome and letting us put cameras up there. And you I'm know what? Like if you're coming to Starbase, that is a nice place to stay. In fact, a great place to stay. What'd you say, Ryan? I remember the network things. The hotel like supports like the entire point-to-point -point network. It's true. Here's another angle. What is this from River Tower? This is awesome. Uh, or was this south? From the south? Yeah. You can see more of the less of the heat shield from from the from the river. Right, right. Unfortunately, the dust cloud went to the south, so it does get in the way a little bit. You know, that's like the starbase roulette. <laughs> you never know which way yeah. the dust cloud is going to go. Well, at, at least we have cameras <laughs> on every angle with the ship, so no matter which way it goes, we've got a clean angle. That's true. Beautiful shot there, including the bird vacating rapidly. And ship 29 emerges from the dust triumphant. Another south angle. See if we can see any tiles coming off. I don't. No. I think. Because this is the angle we couldn't see from the trailer. Uh, the trailer view, which was panning up and down, uh, tilting up and down. Oh, sorry. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a bit worn out. Um, but yeah, when the dust cloud clears, tick, tick, tick. Thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it it does look like no tiles fell off on that side. Excellent. What a beautiful firing. Mm -hmm. For the moment we can see it, that flame looks strong, it looks clean, doesn't look like there's any engine-rich combustion in there, it looks like a proper, solid, single-engine static fire. So fingers crossed if they can sort out the roll control issues, I think that's probably a good chance Ship 29 will be conducting a in-space burn on its flight. Definitely agree. Just a little roll control issue. It's still good. It's still good. Beautiful stuff. Way to go, SpaceX. Good job, Ship 29. Another United Rentals view here. Ooh, that one had sound. Nice raptor honk. Yeah, can we get that again? Let's do it again! Yay. Excellent. Uh, 
Gotta love the raptor honk. Fantastic. Well, I think with that, we will start to wrap things up, but I would be remiss if I did not mention that we do have our stream for Delta Four Heavy live. That is tomorrow as a reminder. So be sure you tune in for that. It's going to be a good one. It's the final Delta Four Heavy. It's the final Delta rocket and it's a three core monster so that is happening out of the cape max and d and julia and the entire cape team is uh firing on all cylinders sawyer as well so we will uh we'll, we're looking forward to that it's going to be you know a sort of a bittersweet experience being the last delta and all maybe we'll get adrian on stream to give us some eloquent thoughts since he loves delta so much um, but it should be a good Make sure one. He has we're plenty we're of gonna. Tissues. He'll need it. He'll be sobbing. Right, right. So yeah, th you know, let's let's do it proper. Let's send off Delta Heavy in uh, proper NSF fashion and hang out and and be happy that we get to see it fly one more time. I have a so, question for you. Yeah. Uh oh. Is Delta IV Heavy one of your favorite rockets to shoot? Because, like, all of the shots that I see of it, especially out of Vandenberg, are just breathtakingly gorgeous. All right, let's just go down the rabbit hole. Uh, yeah, there's a reason why I'm, like, Mr. West Coast, and there are reasons why I'm annoying about it. I'm just trying to be, like, funny and do a tribalism to fill air. But uh, I really do love the West Coast, and I really do love Vandenberg, and I really do love Slick 6. The mountains that are proximate to the pad afford some really nice views. And, yeah, I, I shooting Delta IV and Delta IV Heavy at Slick 6 is will always hold a special place in my heart it's a beautiful rocket i almost flew to florida for this um to get one more chance at getting a lens on delta 4 heavy but uh alas i did not i figured i'd better spend my time prepping for the eclipse and things just didn't line up but yes trevor a short answer yes it is delta 4 heavy is an absolute beauty of a rocket to shoot especially given that it has those Hydrolox engines, the beautiful mock diamonds. Yeah. Um, don't tell him I said this, but I will always be mad at Michael for getting the excellent slow-mo shot of the engines um, on, I forget what NRO mission it was, but it was a Delta Heavy out of Vandenberg. That's the shot that's in our intro. I will always be mad that that's his shot, not my shot. Um, and I will take that to my grave. So, so hopefully he didn't listen to this and hopefully you don't tell him that. But yes, me like Delta Heavy. So there you go. Yeah, it'll be, I mean, it's bittersweet because it's awesome that moving on to better things that make more sense financially, but that rocket is just really cool, even if I don't, even if I think it's silly that the first stage is Hydrolox. Put it this way, um, you know, I, I shoot airplanes a lot. Uh, it's also like a thing I like to do. And when I started in the like 2010s, the sort of airplanes I would see flying around in the desert, you know, there's a there's a fairly large variety. Um, and as time goes on, more and more and more, it's like, oh, look, F-35s. Oh, look, F-35s. Oh, look, F-35s. Which, I like shooting the F-35 just fine, but um, the variety is, is something I definitely have noticed a change in. And you know what? There'll be a change in variety of rockets. And thankfully, we're getting a bunch of new ones. So it's not going to be all samey or anything, but... You know, Delta IV Heavy has had its time, and it uh, it's going away. It's like a classic car, you know. There's a you, you right. love them, but they they're, they're just not going to be manufactured anymore. There you go. All right. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in today's stream, Ryan. Thanks for being on, buddy. You're very welcome, Jack. It's been nice. I'm gonna now go and eat some fish cakes. <laughs> enjoy the fish cakes please do me a favor do our members a favor and post your fish cakes in food chat in the member discord i want to okay. see okay okay trevor thank you as well for being on today's stream yeah my pleasure and also in the background we had i believe k 
Kevin Michael Reed operating today's stream. KMR, you complete me. Thank you for merging your mind with the mainframe in order to help us bring these views to everybody. I, I know it took away your humanity, but hey, live streams. Uh, and we also had Jay Keegan in the background. And you know what? Das was up super late with me last night getting things set up. So thank you to Das for that as well. Uh, with that, we will leave y'all nerds to watch Starbase Live. And don't forget to tune into Delta 4 Heavy and also watch the deal we put out this morning. Watch all the content. Hit all the like buttons. We love you. We'll see you next time. Oh, also, there's Dr. Phil Metzger on, uh, on NSF Live this weekend. So watch that as well. And, of course, follow NSF on all the socials. NSF Live underscore IG on Instagram. Official NSF on TikTok. On Facebook, we're NASA Space Flight. On uh, X, we saw... Or, uh, I can't even talk. On X, we're also <laughs> NASA Space Flight. All right. <sighs> wrap it. Let's wrap it. Make the stream stop, please. And here we go. The chamber pressure looks good. Following up. Water towers fly! Yes! Can go down to nominal. Fly down to SPD off. Play in SPD off. It's orange! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Deepwinesh! Put that in the big bag. 343 unfolds to go. Indeed. We rise together, back to the moon and beyond. This is meant to be igniting the flare, correct? Right?